Consider supporting Archeo Soup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Thank you. Hello, Christian. Hello, Mark. Hello. Good morning. It's been a it's been a, a interesting setup this morning, getting uh, getting to grips with with Zoom, but, uh, yeah. but but we made it in the end, which is the important thing. And um, I've invited you to have a bit of a chat this morning. Incidentally, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> and to have a bit of a chat this morning about uh, a Viking ship burial uh, site that, that's been well it was it it came into the news uh, a couple of years ago but it's, been, it's seen a resurgence in recent uh, months um, and weeks uh, and it sounds like a very interesting site now uh, I want to try and pronounce this correctly <clears throat> Yelestad 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 uh, very good Yelestad sorry and I'm curious as to how not only this, this ship burial came about in terms of its discovery and, and, and what we know of the site but also how it fits in with with the broader growing sense of of uh, period sites now I, uh, without any further ado uh, could you possibly just introduce yourself uh, where it is that you work and and how on earth this this Viking ship burial came to be known to modern people <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Uh, my name is Christian Löksen Rödser. I work at the Museum of Cultural History in uh, Oslo. It's a part of the University of Oslo. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there I'm uh, working as an advisor. I do a lot of planning of uh, archaeological excavations and uh, I do participate in excavations myself as well. Um, and uh, Last year, we made a trial excavation of this Viking ship that you mentioned, which mm -hmm. was found or discovered back in 2018. And uh, what led, it was an accidental discovery in a way, actually. Uh, what led to it was that uh, the farmer at Gjellestad, uh, he applied for, an, uh, for uh, draining the field county archaeologists who started uh, to do a geophysical survey in collaboration with some institute called the Norwegian, uh, called NIKU, Norwegian Institute for uh, Cultural Her Heritage. Uh, and uh, they um, made a geophysical survey of the field and found a whole lot of finds. Uh, <laughs> No, I've seen I've seen an image of the survey, and uh, I couldn't help but compare it to the Eye of Sauron. It had quite a dramatic sort of cat's eye kind of look going on. But uh, but was so was that uh, at that stage was that uh, enough to make it such that the field was no longer suitable for just draining, in so much as presumably wooden remains or potential wooden remains would be vulnerable uh, to sudden loss of water. Yeah, well, uh, at least to the farmer, he thinks it's too wet. Uh, and uh, when we went uh, about trial uh, excavations uh, last year, it, I must say it wasn't that wet. And uh, had it been wetter, it would have been better for the preservation. Mm. Uh, but still, he, he, he thinks it's uh, not suitable for modern ag agriculture. So, uh, so he wants to drain it. Uh, and... Uh, Seeing what we saw uh, on the geophysical map uh, with the finds almost all across the field, it's, uh, it is in a way impossible to do that without uh, having proper excavations first and, and, and saving this uh, material, I mm. guess. I, I like the phrase, wetter is better. That should be on a t-shirt, <laughs> yeah. wetter is better. So, uh, so what was found then? Uh, at the ship burial or yeah. in general? Well, I, I, it, 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 well, all <laughs> of it, but, but you know, I, I proceed as you will. Yeah, I will. Uh, uh, I should also mention, actually, that, uh, that there is still a large mound on the field. It's called the Yell Mound, and uh, 
this was excavated, or it wasn't excavated, a, a trial trench was dug into it mm -hmm. back in 1968-69. And uh, this is the next largest grave mound in Norway, uh, one of the largest in, uh, in Northern Europe, actually. Mm -hmm. so, some 80 meters in diameter, wow. uh, so it's quite large. Uh, um, the archaeologist archeolog uh, doing this excavation called uh, Erling Johansen, he believed this was to be a ship mount, mm -hmm. which it proved not to be. <laughs> no, no, no. What he found in his trench was a central cairn, and uh, below that some, uh, some small fragments of bone, and, uh, and I think he found a bead. Uh, of course, this is just a small trench. Uh, there can't be much left in there, but he made some uh, some datings, uh, and it's this mound was built in the migration period, somewhere around 450 to 600 AD. So presumably, then all of these other the smaller mounds and and the ship burial were sort of drawn to the site by this focal point. Is that is that is that what people yeah, is that's... that what the presumption is or i, I would believe so mm -hmm. uh i we, i shouldn't say that this large mound was even the first thing that we uh, that were, uh, was established on this field uh, probably goes even way back mm -hmm. before that mm -hmm. uh there has been uh, a lot of metal detecting going on at the field and uh we have finds from almost all periods of the iron age in norway Right. Uh, so one of the most uh, finest finds, I'd say, it's a little gold pendant with the uh, made by filigree technique, uh, and it's uh, it should be uh, what it, it should be the Norwegian period, uh, the Roman Iron Age of Norway. That would be somewhere around three to four hundred, I believe. This uh, pendant was made in this. This could also come from one of these uh, overplowed mounds. Mm -hmm. So my guess is uh, that we have a quite uh, large area. We have buildings, uh, we have grave mounds, and when this Viking ship mound is established, it's establishing into a, 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 context, a context that is all, already there. Mm. Uh, so it's, it, it connects to these older monuments. And are, are these buildings likely to be lived in, or are they more likely to be sort of mortuary houses? Yeah, we did the the, the trial excavations, uh, looked into that, and uh, and we opened up trenches uh, to look at some of the post holes and get datings, and uh, uh, and we now know that the buildings are uh, from the early Iron Age. They are before the ship mount. Right. Uh, so it must have been uh, both a settlement, uh, maybe a grave um, field uh, is established next to the to the to this settlement, and uh, uh, and these mounts would of course be uh, very visible uh, for travelers uh, in the area. It's we are both for land travel and sea travel. I, I'd say mm -hmm. uh, we are some. We are about nine meters above sea level, and uh, if you raise the sea level uh, to four and a half meters, uh, with, which would be correct in the in the Viking Age, more or less, uh, we are almost shorebound. Right. Uh, so very visible for travelers of all kinds, mm -hmm. um, uh, and a, and a remarkable place, I'd say, mm -hmm. uh, a powerful site in the in this landscape. And so, how, how before I suppose before we we explore and examine what what specifically was going on in 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 the in the ship that so far that has been established, how should people imagine this site? Then is it is it a place that has, as you say, a long history, lots of lumps and bumps, people probably living there, and lots of activity? Is it? But is is it akin to a I, I, I don't know, like a Lourdes, a Lourdes or what, you know, like a, essentially a, a place of pilgrimage where people go uh, and are passing by, or is it more like a settlement where there's trading going on and there happens to be a big cemetery nearby? Uh, how, how do you, th how do, you, at the moment, how do people, th uh, how should people think that people yeah, felt I th about I, it? I think it must have de developed over time uh, and uh, maybe from... Uh 
from the first settler in the early Iron Age. Uh, they made their houses, they started establishing mounds. Uh, and maybe this was quite a central area. Uh, so they developed uh, quite much power in the, in the local community and maybe, maybe broadening that uh, over the years. Uh, and when they build this tremendously huge mound in the migration periods, they must be very powerful. Uh, so it's a symbolic uh, monument in the landscape. Yeah. Uh, so power relations uh, really established. Uh, then we come, then the uh, settlement seems to, well, I don't know, maybe maybe we just don't see it, but, but it seems that there is no settlement in the Viking Age. Right. The houses uh, houses might have moved, uh, mm -hmm. it might be nearby, so, so it's difficult to tell. But what we know is that there are a lot of uh, finds uh, um immediately south of these uh, mounds um it's a farm called Jelmungen and uh, metal detecting has proved a lot of uh, finds of weights and coins right uh, probably indicating uh, trade and mm -hmm. production maybe it must have been a very central activity area yeah, yeah, and I suppose it makes sense that even if their settlement had dwindled somewhat by uh, the Viking Age, uh, there would have been a sense of, well, we'll meet at the mound and do trading, or maybe someone, someone, an individual or a couple of people moved there and they could catch passing ships and trade, perhaps. Uh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that sounds, that's, that's interesting. Um, so why then, given the this, this, this established history in the landscape and then this sort of trading post, why would then someone want to have a, a ship burial there? Yeah, well, the ship burial is the, is the, some kind of the prime burials for the elite of the Viking Age. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it seems fair that they wanted to connect to this large mound in the, in the landscape mm. that was already there and just to connect uh, to, the, to the first, uh, well, not the first farmers, but the, fir the, <laughs> the first, uh, what you call it? Uh, the settlers? First, the first settlers, maybe, uh, of the area. Mm -hmm. uh, and just uh, just be a part of that old history of the sites that it seems uh, important for uh, for the Viking Age uh, elite. Mm. We also have the same uh, kind of thing going on at Bodje, uh, where you have um, traces of settlement uh, pre Viking Age, and and in the Viking Age they established large mounds uh, close to this settlement. So. Mm. Uh, it's it's nothing. It, it's not something we see only at this site. No, well, so something something that 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 might be an interesting comparison is that, for example, here in the UK, uh, especially in 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 the Saxon kingdoms, you see lots of people making reference to what came before in the context of it being uh, a race of giants or or be or being pseudo mythological people almost who created for example in in especially you know old roman cities that are eroding mm -hmm. and people want to relate themselves to these great structures or, or for example, even prehistoric mounds but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily fully it's not as though there's a, a a full understanding of of a lineage or something like that it's much more a case if they want to be near these things which which feel powerful is, is that a similar sort of comparison do you think then um, yeah i be hmm. believe so i think hmm. i think i think it was important to connect to the past actually hmm. uh, and past powerful structures uh, did mean a lot to to people in the viking age as well hmm. uh, uh, and throughout history i guess hmm. Well, I suppose uh, there's, there's a re there is a reason why people still go to places like Stonehenge, I suppose, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, just out of interest then, uh, is there, has there been any estimations in terms of how much effort it would have taken to make that first big mound? People often talk yeah. in terms of man hours than they are human hours. Is there any yeah. sense of that? Yeah, there is, but I can't really uh, remember how much, but... Uh... A lot of people um, must have worked on it. Uh... Yeah. Uh, there's a central central cairn of stones uh, inside, which must have been established first, and then all this uh, 
all the soil on top uh, it must have been, uh, must have been a lot of man labor mm. uh, and so was, so, uh, so it had a certain irresistible pull in the landscape people wanted to be near it yeah 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 it, it really must have been yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so, so what, what, uh, what, what the, 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 the ship burial is, is established in the, in this, this wet, but not quite wet enough field. Um, <laughs> and, uh, what, what, uh, what, what, what was found when you did some initial excavations then to see what was there? Yeah. Uh, what we did, uh, what was very great for us was, was that we had the geophysical results, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that made us able to choose specific areas of where, where to go into and, and do these uh, yeah. trial excavations and uh, what we what we looked at was uh, was that we could see um, even though he, the farmer wanted to do drainage there was an old drainage ditch going right into the middle of the ship actually really oh. uh, yeah uh, this is of course not a good thing but uh, <laughs> But it's a good starting point for us because if we were to uh, re-excavate that um, drainage uh, pipe uh, or ditch uh, with a pipe inside, uh, we wouldn't destroy anything new. No. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's what uh, actually what we started off by doing. Uh, we uh, we uh, we sieved off the topsoil first, uh, like two or three meters. Uh, wide and some 20 meters long trench mm -hmm. uh, going uh, from uh, across the, the ship anomaly and uh, also throughout the, the rest of the mound mm. so we could see what was going on and what was left of the mound construction as well mm -hmm. um, and uh, quite quickly uh, after removing the topsoil we did find ship nails right uh, so we knew that well, it's really hair. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, it's uh, not a geophysical physical <laughs> uh, imagination. And so, presum uh, presumably, were you finding nails at set distances, essentially at the ends yeah. of planks and this kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, some 18, 19 centimeters apart, as they normally are when you are blinker building. Mm -hmm. uh, so these nails uh, just. Uh, came out in a nice uh, nice row for us so we knew we were in the right place mm. uh, then we could uh, you mean, what, what, you, what you mean is you nailed it uh, yeah 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 <laughs> sorry there we go on <laughs> <laughs> i would have made a clink on my glass if i could. <laughs> cheers <laughs> cup of tea yeah, yeah. <laughs> so go ahead <laughs> we nailed it um <laughs> But uh, we had to do a little more than that. Uh, so we mm. had to empty uh, the drainage ditch. Mm. Uh, so when we started doing that, uh, we were uh, moving down uh, and could, could see layers inside the ship. And um, the drainage pipe was found at about 60 centimeters uh, below the surface. So uh, by then we had a quite good uh, cut through the boat to see the to see the um, the inside of the ship, mm. and it uh, I must say it wasn't great. Uh, the the wood had deteriorated deteriorated uh, quite badly, so we could only only see the imprints yeah. of the ship. But still. The imprints uh, were really solid. We could see all the strakes or the planks uh, of the ship. We could see where they had been riveted, uh, where they overlapped. So we could see uh, see the whole of the construction actually. And uh, of course, when we also find the nails, we, we, we if we were to do um, a full excavation of this, it would be possible to do a, a full reconstruction of the ship as it once had been in its pride days. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, of course, the wood was decomposed. Uh, we could not lift it. No. Uh, so if we are to do a full excavation, we have to do a... Um, well, conservation is going to be quite costly at yeah. that site uh, to, to be able to 
uh, to lift out the imprints, it had to be solidified by uh, by glue or some resin. Uh, yeah, and presumably you, 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 you're not just talking about removing, as it were, a, a, an imprint of the artifact, but also probably elements of the soil that's... that's yeah, yeah that's I, I, I'm meaning yeah, fixating chunks. the soil to, yeah. to, to lift it up in chunks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what 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 sort of did we were we were able to establish the dimensions? I mean, presumably the GFS gave you a good sense of dimensions anyway. But what what yeah. sort of size of ship are we talking about then? Yeah, well, uh, the whole size of the ship we only have from geophysics because we we only did this uh, small trench across it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the size of the ship is uh, we can see it's about uh, twenty meters long in the geophysics. Right, right. And uh, five meters wide. Okay. Because. So it's uh, it's large. Mm -hmm. It's uh, we must as it's been our plowed. We must assume that uh, uh, parts of the sterns are missing, uh, which would make it even longer. Yeah. Uh, so it's just up there with all the all the other Viking ships we have uh, in our collections. Yeah. Well, I just I just between, quickly uh, and the Goxla. Oh, I just quickly checked. Sorry, and um, uh, obviously, for example, the the Usterberg ship is twenty one point five eight meters long, yeah, and five point ten meters wide. So, yeah, so it's, it compares favorably. Yeah, it com compares uh, really great. Uh, um, we'll never know exactly before we excavate it, uh, but it must be be up there with the uh, with the other big um, ship mounts and uh, and ships that uh, that we have in our collections. Yeah. Now, is, is this at this point then? Uh, is there a slight sense of of um, uh, a frustration that the that the wood isn't better preserved? In so much as obviously, in the, the Usterberg example, is so yeah. finely carved uh, that that I mean, is there any indication that this boat was made to that sort of standard? This ship, sorry, was made to that sort of standard or not? Well, uh, that is difficult to say from excavating uh, like uh, twenty centimeters yeah. wide <laughs> trench, but yeah. but uh, but it, of course it could have been. Yeah. Uh, uh, from the ships we have, uh, only Ulsberg is that finely carved. Mm -hmm. uh, the Goxta is more of a, <laughs> a more of a workhorse, maybe, but yeah. uh, but it's still a really nice ship, mm -hmm. uh, and I guess uh, Yellowstar must be too. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the preservative conditions aren't uh, as great as in the Oseberg and Goxta. Uh, this ship was dug into uh, silt, uh, some sands at the top maybe, mm -hmm. uh, while the Oseberg, of course, uh, is preserved in, in clay. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, wetter conditions. So it, is, it was expected that we, we wouldn't find the whole of the ship. Mm. But but I I'd still say that uh, we have found quite a lot, and of course modern archaeology uh, and methodology makes it possible to 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 generate a lot of uh, data out of what we can see here, even though it's not as well preserved as the Oseberg. I'm just looking at a, a reconstruction um, drawing on uh, Science Norway, uh, the website yeah. Science Norway, and. Um, it, it appears to show maybe how someone suspects the ship was placed into the ground. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it's been rolled up and then the silt is being brought around it. And at, yeah. this, at this point, as the silt is coming into the ship, the mast is still upright. And this is something which I've never really considered uh, yeah. properly, is should, should, should we think of these mounds as having at some point a ship inside with a mast marking the mound almost because there are yeah. there are comparisons to be made for example in iron age uh yorkshire where it seems as though burials were made whereby spears were stuck into possibly even the corpse itself yeah and these spears would have rotted over time almost like a hedgehog should yeah. we imagine <laughs> should we imagine them um, uh a mound with a with a mast sticking up or would that mast be taken down do you think uh, well, we could imagine anything because we can't really see it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I would uh, probably believe that it was taken down, uh, but it, but placed inside the ship. But uh, we couldn't possibly know. I think the mast sticking high up, it wouldn't be preserved uh, at least at this uh, in this mount. No. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't say it's impossible. Mm -hmm. 
but if you were to build the mound with a mast sticking up, it's uh, you're going to build uh, really high as well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, and, and the thing is, I'm not necessarily suggesting that you would have to cover the mast, but rather that that you would allow I the mast. See what you mean. If you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I, but as, sorry, just the thought just occurred to me when I saw the image. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a lovely reconstruction. Even though the uh, wood was very decayed, uh, uh, the strakes and the, or the planks of the and the hull of the ship was very decayed. Uh -huh. We we could in the geophysical um, photos uh, see uh, some a line in the central part of the ship that mm. indicated that maybe this was better preserved. And as we had removed the uh, drainage pipe, uh, we could see that uh, the the, um, the wooden remains of the ship they become became more preserved beneath it. Of course, the drainage would have allowed uh, oxygen inside the mound, uh, deteriorating the situation. Yeah. Um, but we still couldn't see the keel. Uh, so, so and, the keel uh, was the keel essentially below the water level still. The, 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 the keel was at least below the water drainage table. pipe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the drainage pipe had uh, sunk the water table. So, uh, um, or 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 um, sunk. That's uh, that's what you do with the ship, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think this um, one definitely would sink if you tried to sail it again. Um, yeah, that's but but um, so we had to to go on excavating. That's uh -huh. that's that is where I'm coming to. Um, and uh, we did actually find the keel, and the keel was more preserved than the rest of the ship. Right. It was actually uh, a a good chunk of wood, uh, and we were able to sample it mm -hmm. and lift mm -hmm. it out. So th so this was actually preserved. Uh, and this is uh, this was very important because then we could uh, say something about the, the condition of the site uh, because we had a specialist analyze it and uh, she could clearly see that it was uh, deteriorating uh, um, as we speak. It uh, it was attacked by soft rot right. from all angles. Uh, so, but bacteria are working. Uh, on on the keel and was that happening is that is that happening in the ground now That's that is what... happening in the ground as we speak right. yes okay um and uh, well the the keel was uh, soft and spongy uh, the surface mm -hmm. but but the center of it uh, it was uh, quite well preserved wood yeah uh, but as we saw from the the strakes uh, they had uh, almost uh, been eaten up and uh, this is, of course, um, happening with the keel as well. The cell walls are slowly being consumed by bacteria. Yeah. Uh, so we have an urgent situation and we need to excavate it before it's all gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were able to sample it and, and, uh, and by that also uh, do some dendrochronology to establish the date uh, of this ship. And um, it's not, uh, well, the keel is 100% certainly uh, dated, but uh, it would be an even more precise date if we would be able to do some strikes or planks as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so this dendrochronology is just uh, solely based on the keel. And the keel uh, had been part of a tree that had, had grown from 603 until 724. Wow, which is quite uh, early, um, early dates. But uh -huh. this is, uh, but it's important uh, to say that this is not the date of the ship, uh, yeah. because um, uh, the earliest uh, date for the felling of the tree uh, would, from that, be around seven hundred and thirty-three, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually pre-Viking age. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but uh, but then it must be stressed that uh, we don't have the surface of the wood. No. We don't. If we would have the bark, we would be sure of when the felling was. Uh, but we had uh, some more than 120 uh, growth rings, and by removing just uh, a centimeter uh, or or or. Um, 
or uh, or two it could be like a hundred years so yeah from that uh, I would say that the dating is probably within the beginning of the Viking Age somewhere from around the late 700s uh, somewhere until uh, 900 AD would be the the most correct date frame to give to this right and so presum- uh, presumably then this this adds even more urgency to the to the need to get at it before more of of that exterior is is eroded by microbial yeah, activity yeah because if yeah. we would uh, if there would uh, be more stra- more more left of strakes or planks or interior woods uh, uh, somewhere at midships yeah. it would help this standard chronolo- chronology a lot Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but well, uh, but there was uh, one more important thing that came out of this uh, dendrochronology chronology uh-huh. analysis, and that was the provenance of the find. Uh, because when you do dendrochronology chronology, you compare it. Of course, they were built somewhere uh, in western Norway, actually, or southwestern Norway. Uh, we know that uh, the Oseberg and the and the Goksta uh, small boat uh, were built uh, in the western part of Norway. So um, it indicates that the Yellowstar ship also was built uh, somewhere in this uh, western part of Norway and not uh, within the Oslo fjord, right, right. where it was buried. Right. Uh, presumably, though, it's going to be really hard to be to be more specific than that in so much as you know in very rare situations say with pottery you can talk about pots coming from a particular place you know pick the yeah. town even some yeah. in some cases you know, fingerprints have been matched in terms of potters but in this instance uh, is, is it is this indicating that a certain part of, of the area is great for its trees rather yeah. than maybe there is a particular shipwright or, or, or dock that's making these these places. I think oh, both, shit. actually, uh, because <clears throat> right. you, you would, of course, need the great oak woods um, that were present in, uh, in Western Norway at the time. We know um, the Osberg and the Goksta small boat was, uh, was both built uh, within a fjord. Um, in Western Norway, uh, but it's also possibly to do with the shipwrights. Uh, right. They were probably specialists over there. Um, but then again, the tuna ship was built uh, in the Oslo Fjord, with wood at least coming from the Oslo Fjord area. So um, we have to we have to do more than draconology uh, to come more come to a more precise conclusion on uh, on the on the the provenance uh, on the sac- on the exact place of provenance mm-hmm, but uh, mm-hmm. but at least it shows that uh, we have great contacts uh, across uh, Norway during the period and uh, yeah. and uh, it's a national it's of national interest <laughs> well of course it's of international interest uh, such mm-hmm. a find excellent cool I, I love the idea of uh, of people almost like in a you know if you imagine ships at a um, at a junction as if they'd be at a junction. Yeah. So they're, waiting, they're looking over and going, oh, my ship's from, uh, from you know, Sven, he made this one. <laughs> like, yeah. this one's a special <laughs> ship. Um, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he's very famous. Yeah, very well known. Well done. And then other people go, we need to get one of those. Can't be showed up. Um, sorry, I've gone off of a slight tangent there. But, yeah, that, 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 that's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful, if nothing else, the materials, it's a wonderful connection there. Uh, and it, and if, 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 I guess, an, if an establishment could be made in terms of um, uh, construction uh, similarities as well, that would be even more impressive. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It would. What, what sort of details, um, were there, sorry, were there any... Uh, other details that came from the kill, for example, could you can see could you see construction yeah. methodology and you know the, presumably the use of axes, this kind of thing? Or was there any any of those sorts yeah, of well, details? the surface uh, the surface wasn't very well preserved, so uh, axe uh, working was not possible to see. But but we were able to find some interesting uh, features still. Uh-huh. One of them is that this keel is very small and slender. Okay, comparing to for example Osberg and Goksta. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's maybe more like the tuna ship. Um, what this means, we have to excavate more to say for sure. But it it could be it could mean uh, that it doesn't have uh, this very solid uh, keel for sailing. 
maybe it's a rowing ship, but that is uh, that is way too early to say or mm -hmm. to conclude. But it's it's a theory. Um, so, are, are you? Is that sort of a, essentially a comment on on potentially uh, <laughs> potentially yeah, but, but, its ability to cross, for example, an ocean compared to say just sticking to the coastline? Or oh, it's like, uh, yeah. No, I'm not sure that's uh, that's important, but it's. Uh, because they were rowing the Viking ships mm -hmm. as well as uh, sailing them. Mm -hmm. uh, but this ship might be primarily for rowing, but uh, I suppose it uh, could have a sail as well. But okay. we, won't, uh, we won't find out until we, we come across the midsection of the ship where mm -hmm. we could see if there is actually the remains of a mast. Oh, I see. So this, this drawing with a mast is lying to me already. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I see what you mean. Yes, okay, yeah, and and and, and so um, uh, is, 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 does that have a, a any known implications then in terms of the way that that, that the particular ship might have been used or perceived then, sail sailing versus rowing? Is there is there a a, a, a you know a work a day trade implication? Is it more of a, a, a sort of a a, a a leisure cruise kind of scenario? What uh, does it have I, any implications? Um, yeah, well. That would uh, be easier to say if we excavate more, but uh, what it clearly says is that uh, none of these ships are alike. No. Uh, there, mm. there are several kinds of them, and, and this is maybe yet another one, So, which, which means we would know more about sailing skills and uh, or rowing skills, if that's the matter, mm -hmm. uh, by excavating this, and, and, and it's a new... Uh, it's a new uh, well, it's new. Cons it's not a new construction type, but it's uh, uh, it's uh, a variant. It's mm. a variant, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Um. So, so I suppose I I'm going to stop trying to trying to draw out specifics from you because, in that sense, it's not fair, is it, to say, yeah, compare this to Utsavok. Tell me more. Um, based on your on these small excavations, but uh, do, does this add to uh, or just just have the potential to add to the the general understanding of this type of ship burial, uh, and and what so something that I always try and ask people in these these sorts of interviews is what what would you like more people to think about and to know when they see these sorts of sites? Is there some grand myth or some you know some 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 little niggling annoyance that you have that that, that you'd like more people to to understand <laughs> when it comes to this sort of thing? Maybe one of them is Mark. Stop asking me questions about about Um <laughs> well, <that's fine>. uh, <laughs> well, I, I, at least I think uh, there must be uh, this uh, this ship burial phenomenon. Mm. It must have been uh, uh, more wide ranging that than we have appreciated uh, earlier on. Uh, you know, the last time. We excavated the ship burial was back in 1904-05 with the Osberg, mm. so it's quite a long time ago, and we were thinking that there weren't any more ship mounts, maybe. But mm. uh, but now with the modern technology, they uh, they start appearing, uh, and this is not the first one. They they have found one in uh, Western Norway as well uh, mm. uh, lately, uh, less preserved and and a bit smaller than the than the Elsta, but but still. But the Alista is is one of the large ones, and, and it has a really national uh, interest. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. part of this uh, ship burial complex, uh, and that's uh, that's something that we need to work more on. Uh, um, there are more sites than we know, and uh, and accompanying this uh, these uh, important power uh, sites or or um, or central sites uh, are these great grave mounds, and uh, and as I as we previously talked previously talked about, uh, the trade sites uh, could also connect to these uh, to these great mounds. Uh, we have the same thing at uh, the at the Goksta, which was excavated back in 1880, but it wasn't before in 2011 and 12 that we appreciated that this that there was uh, a trading site uh, or a production site uh, just 500 uh, meters away from it. Mm. Yes, 
Yeah. And well, I suppose in that sense, uh, I guess you've been you've been fortunate in this site to to be able to establish its context in the landscape a bit more thoroughly than yeah. that, I suppose. That, that um, is, uh, so, 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 so how how uh, do do you think then that 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 this because you, you're saying how that this this means that this um, that these burials seem to be more common than previously imagined and thought. Uh, do, I, I imagine, or sort of rather, it sounds as though you're walking a line here theoretically between adding to a sort of a, a, com a sense of burial complexity and, as, and grandeur in terms of the period but also uh, not wanting to not wanting to sort of to to to, to imagine that this was common yet if so not, not at least not at all common i think yeah. uh, because uh, this is really an elite thing mm. you wouldn't bury a ship no <laughs> Only a special persons uh, could afford burying a whole ship. Yeah, well, it takes uh, effort. Yeah, mm. it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of uh, of uh, economical uh, power to be to be able to just uh, uh, offer so much. Yeah, and and sh sh but and and, and and I suppose one 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 more question then related to that is uh, presumably is the is the running theory at the moment that this is an individual's burial. Um, so far, they seem to be for, yeah. for particular people, yeah. don't they? You know, our little trench didn't. Uh, we 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 didn't find the the individual buried, of course. Uh, so no. this this could um, this could very well be one person. But as we know from the Osebog, there were two women. Mm -hmm. uh, the Goksta had one man. Um, so it's I would say it's quite open. Uh, the bad thing is that uh, this mound has been overplowed. Right. Uh, possibly um, removing some important artifacts. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe that the chance of finding a lot of artifacts, a lot of uh, imprints from uh, other wooden features and also objects inside the ship, they are there. Uh, I think it's a rich find. Uh, and, well, and, and, and so is, is that is that what's next for this site then? What we want to do is, uh, based on what we know of the preservative condition, is that we must excavate it because mm. uh, it's deteriorating every year, and it's uh, we don't really know how quickly. But uh, but uh, I'm supposing that the situation is getting worse every year we wait. Right. So yeah. we have um, we have approached the government uh, to get funding, uh, but you know the days uh, we are in are uncertain because yeah. of the virus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how that uh, will end up yet. Okay, uh, how does the farmer feel about it? The farmer feels. Uh, he's a very nice guy, actually, cool. and he's very interesting in the archaeology. Uh, I suppose he wants to do the drainage and get back to working his field, uh -huh. but but still, he's uh, he's um, he's very positive. He's waiting, and uh, I think now it's uh, keep an eye on the site. Uh, let's hope the funding comes uh, as quickly as possible so that we're able to save the remains of it. Uh, it's important for both research and the dissemination of the Viking Age. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's, that was a, that's a very very earnest thought at the end there, and also crucially. <laughs> well, and the thing is, crucially, this is actually a crucial element of the yeah. You know, as much as public uh, access and, and archaeology is is a wonderful thing, there is uh, something to be said for responsible approaches to sites like this where where it yeah. is you know it is someone's land and there's a delicate uh, uh, decomposition process going on and as you say there's a funding issue and also you know a, a global pandemic you know these small things that are happening at the moment um <laughs> there the, are some things happening that uh, makes the future a bit uh, uncertain <laughs> absolutely uh, well th th thank you for your time this morning um uh, i suppose uh, finally um uh, is there uh, is there anything that um um that 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 we should uh 
look out for? For example, did, is there a, is there a, a, a university Facebook page or something that, that perhaps people could link to? And also, crucially, if something exciting happens with this project, can we have a chat yeah. again in the future? So, so I can ask you questions that you can actually answer. <laughs> <laughs> like, instead of... of course. <laughs> uh... <laughs> We can uh, surely chat again if if it comes to an excavation. Uh, it's possible that it would happen this year, but uh, but I don't know. But but uh, certainly in a few years, uh, I'd hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, not too many, and uh, the web page to visit would probably be yellestastory.com. Excellent. I don't okay. know if you have looked into it. It's it's, uh, it's a reconstruction uh, page. Yes, no, I, I, I've got it up here on my uh, my laptop here. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so so I'll link to that below in the video information, so people can. That can you can do. Out. Yeah. Grand. Um. Well, once more, thank you for your time this morning, and I suppose that's it for now. Um. As ever, guys. Until next time, do take care at home. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>